In this video sponsored by the makers of Call of Dragons, we're gonna review the very best open field combinations. And right now, we're in the Calling of Courage season of strife. It's the very first season that's happened. And this is the season in which we got the new cavalry. That's Tobin and Urag, which, hey look, I'm leveling them up, but I'm a ways away from actually using them yet. And I will say, in general, cavalry are great for ambushing, but personally, I find that they are not the critical frontline troop that you need. Now, they are really good at rushing down an enemy that's retreating, but that's a different topic. In this video, we're going over the best open field combos. And in this season, in which we do not have long-range warfare, I am finding that I'm going back to a best of the best, use your best archers, use your best mages, and run some infantry at the same time. That means in this configuration, I've gone back to using Goresh and Skogol. I mean, gone back to, I don't know, I've been using them all the time, and they work really, really well. We'll talk about an infantry combo that is surprising me, however, and I'm very impressed with how it's doing. Uh, I am using a maxed out Spirit Bone Torque, and if you wanted to see my Venomous Lizard, here is what that Venomous Lizard is doing. The Venom Lizard, Poison, I find to be really good. I think this is the way to go because range marches are going to chew you up, and you are not going to probably be close enough to those range marches to fully take advantage of something like a Bruin Bear, which has a very short range. So I like going with Infection here. I did put Fierce Attack on here for a Rally Garrison situation. I'm not really doing that anymore. So that is something I could change out to be more effective. And on the Gordish and Skogel, by the way, I do think the crit based build is the way to go because you are doing double counterattacks. The majority of your damage is counterattacks against the units that are hitting you. From here, I've got my double mage combo. And I've been using this for a long time. Of course, we can start with the maxed out Lily Velen, very standard stuff. Going with, of course, the maxed out Infernal Flame. Alternatively, newer in the game, you could use a Phoenix Eye here, and I think that'd be a great choice. And we've got this right over here. This is the Sapphire Phaedrake. Love the Sapphire Phaedrake. Really great damage. The split pain bloom on this is insane. I'm hitting three enemies. Yes. Great, great damage dealt from that AoE. Now, I am moving in on the Burt Tohar combo in that order. And very recently, I've moved in on a Shadow Phaedrake. Now, it's really funny. I was collecting pets to build this up to two stars. And of course, I caught a two-star pet. Oh, my God. So I re-rolled on that a bit. And it, I didn't end up with as good as what this one will ultimately be. So I'll still build toward making this two stars. And someday, I'll have somewhere to put this pet, which like... This re-rolled pretty good, but obviously not as good as this one. So I'm going to try to take this to two stars. I could try to harvest this two star skill, but it's very risky. I think I'm better off just being very happy to have caught one. And at some point, I'll need another mage. And when I do, I'll just put a shadow on there. All right. Easy choices. Now, I am using the Breath of Gigantus over here. It's not perfect. Like, obviously, the Mirage Orb is better. Okay. If you have one of these, it's better. But... I am finding you drop a Breath of Gargantus onto a group of infantry or whatever's clustered, and that does some work. Now, from here, we can talk about the Marksman. And, of course, I am using Magrat and Zeta. This combo is insane, even unmaxed. It is insane. I did get my Zeta to 5-5-5-1, five, 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 and then I took her to six stars. Actually, it's, sorry, the Magrat, 5-5-5-1. Five, 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 the Zeta is maxed out entirely. They're both six stars, working really great. I'm using a Sand Lizard on here for the healing. I think this is just okay as a pet. And I've gone in primarily on a healing and normal attack enhancing build. I am using Advanced Stone Aura for more frequent healing, and that is kind of nuts. She does stay pretty healthy, but if she gets focused, she'll get wrecked. And I am using a Rattle Spear. A little bit unusual, but from this, I'm gaining 7.5% damage dealt and damage taken reduction instead of just 5%. The alternative here is that I could be using my Shadow Blades. I think this is probably the better choice. Obviously, if I had the crossbow, that would be the best choice. My shadow blades are benched at the moment, but this would be an alternative I could go equip. The final hero that, I, of course, I'm using, the hero combo, 
is going to be Sinfrey. Sinfrey with the Gold Crest is outstanding and still performant for me. And I am using the Night Rock, and this Night Rock is decked out, man. I mean, Advanced Ravage does the thing, okay? So I've got a 56.2% chance on normal attack to trigger my Ravage. Yep. Yep, this is this is good. This is good. So this is my main set of troops that I am running. However, I am finding that running more infantry is more relevant this season than other seasons. And here is the preset I'm using if I want to run double inf three mages. All right. So this lets my mages all stand in a cluster together. And some of this is the same. These first three combos you saw me using earlier. However, I am switching up one thing. Instead of Lily and Velen together, I'm using Lily and Thea. The Thea's okay, but I'll use it. And I'm using Velen paired with Waldir. This is where I'm bringing in my Phoenix Eye. Unfortunately, my Phoenix Eye is not very uh, advanced here. I could take this up, get the final 2% damage dealt. I probably should go do that, actually. Um, and I'm not using the three mages all that much, to be honest. Here's my extra Sapphire. It's fine, okay? It's fine. This would ultimately get replaced, for sure, by the new shadow that I have that's two stars. I built this for a uh, hero that is not going to be doing... Um, it's like frost effects and snare effects and burn effects take advantage of the pain bloom damage acceleration like we've got on this one all right right hence plain pain bloom but these days given how the split pain bloom actually works like originally this indicated it was hitting two things now it's only hitting one thing or at least it says it's only hitting one thing very clearly um you're you'd be better off for sure with a shadow imo uh, but is is what it is. Eventually, I would replace that with a shadow, or I'd maybe swap out some skills on this thing. And that final infantry march that has been just cooking for me, it's actually Madeline and Garwood. And the average report of these two infantry marches has been the same for me, which is shocking. But the upper end reports, well, my Goresh and Skogel have been superior, okay? But Madeline Garwood, I just maxed out the Garwood, so I suppose it's not too surprising that once I have all my skills on the Garwood, this combo is doing work. I am using a maxed out Dragon Scale armor. That is obviously very powerful, but also, boom, the Frost Bear, baby. This Frost Bear is only mid. I'd say it's mid at best. Like, you totally can do better. It's got a good strength value and a moderate endurance value. Those are kind of like the two things you really care about. You're really looking for a very good break point on endurance here. Ideally, you would have in the realm of 300 plus endurance. That is a critical break point for this skill over here where you can get an extra second off of this frost armor ability. So you could get seven seconds. I've got six, but seven will be nice. But regardless, the frost bear here, which is very basic, not put a lot of effort into. I still can do a lot with this thing, okay? It's looking pretty good. I even could advance this up to two stars. Like, there's a lot more room for improvement on this pet and this march, which again, is like shocking to me that it is doing as well as it is. So we could get up to a 2.6% base factor plus 5.86, which is pretty legit. That is up from what we have today, which is a base of 1.6 and a boost of 3.5. So I could be doing a lot of damage to all those things hitting this march. Okay? Now, if I use all marksmen, which I did play around with, this I feel like right now kind of has the most potential for me. The reason I say this has the most potential is in part because we know that the Hoskin Kanara is actually insanely good. Then I move the Rattle Spear over there. I've got my Blades over here on the Mag Zay. And my Snow Peak Rock, it's fine. Like, there's definitely things I could do to optimize this, but I would say this is a very low priority pet for me right now. The damage potential of this, just in my opinion, is very low. You need more defense break to really break the snow peak rock and i'm using a nico with thea which seems a little weird but Thea's is going to make it so you do more skill damage nico does skill damage i don't know i think that is a combo that makes sense 
There might be a little bit of anti-synergy here. Let's see. When Nico launches a normal attack, they have an 80% chance to deal damage. Okay, cool. And Thea says the next time they deal hero skill damage. Hmm. Well, I'm I'm not so sure. Oh, ends when a rage skill is cast. Oh, this combo could be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's legit. But the reports were just fine. They were not amazing. All right. And I am using uh, this right over here, the Heart of Kamasi. Unfortunately for me, I've not gotten many of these. I checked to see if I had used them as fodder anywhere else. I had not. So is what it is. I've only gotten two Hearts of Kamasi. I've only gotten two Phoenix Eyes over my entire time playing. Whereas I just get an astonishing amount of some of the other artifacts. I do wonder if certain artifacts are perhaps weighted to show up more or not is what it is. And I've got what I've got. So this is the 4X Marksman combo. But again, what I find myself doing more than anything is just going with the best of the best. All right, the greatest hits, if you will. And that's what I'm using. If you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here, consider subscribing. I've got dedicated guides about each of these heroes. So if you're looking for talents, you can go check those out. Alternatively, if you want to see the start of the season, check the card right over here. This is my entry into the season. It'd be interesting to compare what I thought I would do with what I'm actually doing. And what I'm actually doing is either this right over here or just sending lots of infantry and swapping out the Sin Frey in order to run a double length. Like that's what I'm spending the most time doing.